Hey everyone, it is Reverend Deandra Avahart, and this is lecture two of our series, of our learning series, Rags to Riches, Eliminating a Poverty Consciousness. This learning series is brought to you by the Selah Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies, which is an educational component of Tia Deshay LLC. And I would like to share with you when I was taking classes for my bachelor's in metaphysics, the very first class, the very first module was about prosperity, how, how to develop a prosperity mindset, a prosperity consciousness. And I believe that the reason why that was the very first class is because if at the time, well, at the time I had not, no, at the time I took the class, my tuition was paid. I had completely paid my tuition. But remember when we're talking about uh, a poverty consciousness is more than just money. It's more than a currency, whatever your currency is in the country in which you live. Um, so w one of the reasons I believe that that was the very first course in the bachelor's program was one, if a person, you know, had not paid their tuition all the way um, or had not paid their tuition in full, then it was a great way to start the program to start conditioning that that student's mindset as to not to be in fear not to worry not to stress out not to have anxiety about how you're going to pay your tuition i think that was an excellent way to start the program because a lot of times even when you take classes like at a university, a college, a trade school, technical technical school, whatever, you know, that's the, the main concern is how am I going to pay tuition, you know, or how am I going to pay these loans off once I'm done? And so that was an excellent way to begin the bachelor's program to start conditioning the student to, to abundance, to not, to know that you have more than enough and to know that tuition will be taken care of. But also, in addition to that, to start off the program with a prosperity consciousness class is because you, you needed that or you will need that in order to complete the program. Because remember, we're talking about more than just money, currency, whatever it is, however it is you exchange goods and services as far as monetary value is concerned. We're talking about more than that because in one of the lectures we're going to talk about, about we're going to talk about uh, the, diff the different ways that you can be poor or have a poverty consciousness. And it's more than just money. So to start off the program with that class, you have to condition the mind of the student to not accept limitations in any form so that you can complete the course, so that you can get your bachelor's in metaphysics. And that requires a state, a consciousness, a, lo a level of wealth consciousness because if you have any type of poverty consciousness in your mind or in your consciousness obviously um you won't finish what you start uh, one sign of of having a poverty consciousness is that people don't finish what they start they don't complete things or they go from one job to another they're, they're one relationship to another. 
there's no sense of stability or security in their life. They're just going from one thing to another thing. They don't commit to things. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, there are times when you know when it's when something is over with, when something is finished, when something is complete, you know, and it's time for you to move on to bigger and better things. What I'm talking about is a person just, I mean, after a month, after a couple weeks, you know, they're bored, they tired, they don't have the cognitive uh, ability to 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 stick it out. Their mind starts to wander. Um, they just can't seem to be focused. It, it's just boring to them. Um, you know, it's just the hit it and quit it type of thing. You know, I just come in here for a couple of weeks, grab a paycheck, and then I'm gone. And then I'll sit at home for another two, three months. And then when I feel like working again, I'll go back and work again. Or when I get tired of this relationship, I'll just go to another relationship. That is a sign of poverty consciousness. So to start off the program with that module, with that class about how to program your mind for a prosperity consciousness mindset, it was preparing that student to finish, to complete the bachelor's program. Because completion is a form of abundance. Completion is a form of abundance. And if you have any, anywhere in your mind, if you have any thought or, or mindset or belief that's attached to lack or, limita lack or limitation, you either won't complete a project or it will take you a long time to complete it because you're constantly battling thoughts of lack and limitation. So I wanted to really uh, bring that to your awareness, bring that to your attention. Um, once I really get to the level of my, of my institute, my, um, my academy, all students will be required to take this course on a poverty consciousness because it's so important in not only completing the curriculum that I'm going to present or have, but it's just important in life in general, that if we, if we attack it, if we, if we address it at the very beginning, um, a poverty mindset in, in my curriculum, then I can prevent a whole lot of stopping and starting, stopping and starting, or not even finishing. Because whether we want to admit it or not, collectively, money, wealth is, is, is a factor. It is like the number one factor in, our, in everything that we do, whether we want to admit it or not. So it's important in educational spaces like this, you got to you got to address it at the very beginning before you address anything else. We need to talk about poverty, consciousness, prosperity, consciousness, money, wealth. We need to come and talk about it at the very beginning, because if we don't address it, that will be one of the number one hindrances for people not completing the curriculum, not completing the classes and not living a fulfilled life. <laughs> All right, and that's just the first slide. All right, so once again, I am Reverend Deandra Everhart. This is a learning series, Rags to Riches, Eliminating a Poverty Consciousness. This, this is lecture number two, and it's brought to you by the Save Our Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies, an educational component of Tia Deshaies, LLC. All right, legal disclaimer, this entire PowerPoint course of the Sailor Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies is a copyrighted or is copyrighted 2015 to 2022 by the Sailor Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies, LLC and Tia Deshay, LLC. All rights reserved. This PowerPoint course may not be copied or duplicated in whole or part by any means without express prior agreement in writing with the owner and creator or unless 
specifically noted on this presentation. Some photographs or documents contained in this PowerPoint presentation course may be the copyrighted property of others. Acknowledgement of those copyrights is hereby given. All right, here is our agenda for today. Our vision, our mission, our rationale, and our model statements, our scripture, our cultural trailblazer, our course intentions, our lecture, our references, and then the completion. All right, here's our vision, mission, rationale, and motto statements. Here at the Sela Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies, our vision statement is to change, challenge, and heal generations. Our mission statement is to create a learning space where people know, recognize, and understand that the tools need and resources needed to change, challenge, and heal, them, and heal themselves already exist within. Rationale, people, specifically melanated people of the African diaspora want to be given the permission to exercise the right to change themselves. And our motto here is learning starts within. All right, our scripture and affirmation. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and to confirm and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. In the very first lecture, I mentioned that one, one of the reasons why people are poor is because they forget, they refuse to acknowledge the true source of wealth. And so this scripture is a reminder of where your wealth comes from. Your wealth is not, is not coming from a person, a place, a job, an institution, an organization. Your source of wealth is coming from the creator. And the creator, therefore, once you understand that and once you connect through prayer, meditation, and affirmation, to the creator then the vibration it's like a radio signal you're now sending that signal out to people who are on that same vibration and then that's how the wealth comes to you that's why you're able to get the job that you have the career that you have that's why you receive what is called quote-unquote unexpected funds or miracles where money comes in or abundance comes in ideas come in to you that's why it comes in the form because remember we're on this earthly realm we're in the earth realm so we use the resources and the things that we're familiar with on this earth realm for money to come to you money can come to you in all kinds of ways Abundance can come to you in all kinds of ways. Success can come to you in all kinds of ways. Prosperity can come to you in all kinds of ways. Do not put a limit on it. Just stay connected to the source. Whoever, what, wh whoever you deem as the source, whatever the name you give to the source, stay connected to the source and you will never be without, ever. There will always be abundance and success in your life homework assignment start keeping a journal of all the abundance that you experienced in the day write down as many things as that you can identify all of the ways that you experienced abundance prosperity and success in the day and it will elevate your your mindset when it comes to prosperity and success other homework assignment Make sure that you write down your definitions of what wealth of what um wealth of what wealth is to you, of what success is to you, and what poverty is to you. Because you can only rise up to the expectations of your definition of those three items: success, wealth, um, and poverty. Write down what your definitions are. Don't worry about what everybody else is saying. Write down what your what your definitions are. Now you can listen to other people and, and if it resonates with you, okay. But at the end of the day, you write down what your definition of wealth, your definition of success, and your definition of poverty is. 
Another homework assignment is keep a journal and write down all of the ways that you experience success and abundance in a day. Write it down. Another homework assignment is write down what you're grateful for on a daily basis. At the bare minimum, at least once a week, write down what you're grateful for. The goal is to do it every day. But the bare minimum is to um, do it once a week. Okay, here's the affirmation for today. Now, that scripture came from Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter and the 18th verse from the New International Version of the Bible. What I want to bring out with this is an, another home, homework assignment is you need to connect to your ancestors. You need to connect to God. And you need to find out what was the covenant that God made with your bloodline, with your lineage about wealth? Because that's where your wealth is going to come from. A lot of times we don't even know what covenant God made with the people in our bloodline. With, the, with our family line, our ancestors, our lineage. And we out here chasing the bag and working at a job or pursuing a career or a degree that has nothing to do with the contract, the covenant that God made with our people about how money and prosperity and wealth and success is going to come to us. And that's why we are poor. That's why we have a poverty consciousness. You need to connect with God and your ancestors and figure out how your ancestry made money, created wealth and success in your life or in their lives. And that's how you're going to be prosperous and successful. One of the reasons why you are more than likely poor is because you're doing something that you're violating the covenant. You're violating the covenant and the contract God had with your people. You're doing something that, that's not even connected to the wealth that God promised your people. Notice what that scripture says. Notice what it says. Hope you're taking notes. Because this is a class. This is an online class. You should be taking notes. I gave you some homework assignments. Here's another one. You need to find out the covenant that God has with you and your people. Because that's where your money is. That's where your wealth is. That's where your success is. That's where your prosperity is. You may not even be... Um, supposed to be, you may not even supposed to be working where you are. And that's why you can't seem to keep no money. Because y'all, you may be a carpenter and, and your bloodline, y'all supposed to be cooking. That's where your money is coming from. But you a whole carpenter. And you wonder why you can't secure contracts and why you can't find work. And probably why you can't you keep sustaining injuries on the job. Because you ain't supposed to be a carpenter. You're supposed to be cooking. You're supposed to be using your hands to cook. And build meals, not build houses. Come on, somebody. All right, here, here is our affirmation for today. I recognize that total wealth is achieved not through mortally thinking something into existence, but by Christ's mind knowing, intuitive, intuitively guided by universal consciousness or God as to both thinking and feeling. Basically, this affirmation is saying that Your success, your prosperity 
is coming from the mind of God. It's not you doing this uh, manifestation, you think it, and then it comes into existence. Because the Bible clearly states that our thoughts are not God, God's thoughts. And just like I said a few minutes, just a few seconds ago, you know, you may be thinking that you're going to make money and, and have a life, a lavish life of abundance through carpentry. That's your mortal mind thinking. You need to be connected to your Christ mind. You need to be connected to God's mind. Well, you already are connected to it. You just need to sit down, clear the distractions and listen and listen and get the messages. That is how you, you create a life of success and abundance and prosperity. A sustainable life of prosperity, success and abundance is you connect to the mind of God. You don't connect to your ego. That's how total wealth is achieved. All right. And this affirmation is taken from the spiritual mind, power affirmations, practical, mystical, and spiritual inspiration applied to your life. It's taken from the book entitled Spiritual Mind Power Affirmations, Practical, Mystical, and Spiritual Inspiration Applied to Your Life. This book is written by Dr. Paul Leon Masters, and it is available on Amazon.com. And like I said, the scripture came from the New International Version of the Bible, and it is Deuteronomy 8:18. 8, All right, our cultural trailblazer is Bridget Biddy Mason became one of the wealthiest women in America in the late 1800s because of her ability to buy land and rent property. At the time of her death in 1891, Biddy Mason's grandson, Robert Owens, inherited her property. He stated her, pro her property was worth over $500,000 in 1910, which converts into $13.5 million today. This came from the book Wealthy Blacks Before the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863, written by Kimberly Jones. And this was copyrighted in the year 2020. So those amounts, those figures represent how much $500,000 was worth in USD currency in the year 2020. The reason I provide the cultural trailblazers in my lectures, in my classes, is because I want you to put a concept to a face, to a living, breathing person, an actual person, so you know that this is not something coming out the side of my neck, that this is achievable, that you can actually do this because here is an example. And then you can go and do your research and learn more. Because the more stories of inspiration, the more stories of success that you are exposed to and that you learn about, it helps to elevate your mind, your consciousness from poverty to prosperity. All right, our course intentions. The intent for this course is to examine poverty physically and met metaphysically. The intent for this course is to dismantle, sever, eliminate, and transmute the energy of poverty on an individual scale. Who is poverty? Who is it? Who is it? Let's change it from what it is to talk about who it is. Because poverty could, could be the person you lay on with at night. Poverty could be the person you look at in the mirror, your reflection. Poverty could be your neighborhood, your neighbors. Poverty could be your best friend. Poverty could be your job. Poverty could be your career. 
So who is poverty? Poverty is an animate or inanimate object that steals, prevents, misappropriates, manipulates, blocks, hinders, obstructs, and or distracts an individual from receiving a constant flow of abundance, prosperity, wealth, and success. So whatever, whoever is doing any of the things listed in this definition, then that is poverty in your life. Give it a name. The name could be Marsha. It could be Carl, it could be Tyrone, it could be Mrs. Anderson, it could be Papa, it could be Big Mama, it could be Auntie Titi, it could be Pastor Anderson, it could be your job, <laughs> it could be the university that you're attending, it could be the it could be your neighborhood, whatever the name of your street is. It could be your boyfriend, girlfriend, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your uncle, your nephew. It could be your car. Poverty is an inanimate or is an animate or inanimate object that steals, prevents, misappropriates, manipulates, blocks, hinders, obstructs, and or distracts an individual from receiving a constant flow of abundance, prosperity, wealth, and success. That was this definition. It was intuitively given to me. All right. Now, where I received this, the information for this particular, for today's lecture. In his article, he, he gave the scripture, Proverbs, the sixth chapter in the 11th verse. And this is taken from the New International Version of the Bible. And poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity, scarcity like an armed man. He, in his article, mentioned poverty or he described poverty as a, a thief, a robber, an armed man. If you've ever been robbed, then you have a visual, uh, a visual example of what or visual of what poverty is. Usually when you're robbed, you're caught off guard. Um, you were unaware, you weren't paying attention to your environment, to, to, to the atmosphere, to the space around you. You were caught up, you know, either on your phone, had earbuds in your ear, you know, you were caught up in your thoughts and, um, you could have been on the phone and you weren't paying attention, so you became an easy prey. And that's how poverty is. You're not paying attention. You're not paying attention to your thoughts. You're not paying attention to, to what you do every day. You're not intentional. You just wake up and you do this routine and it's like a, ro a robot. And you're not even questioning, why do I do this every day? What's the purpose of this? Why do I get up and do the same thing every day? How is it making me a better person? How is this routine making me a better person? How is it helping me change my current state of affairs? My current living situation? You're just doing it. And so you're just doing it, you know, doing this routine because you think that's what you're supposed to do because you're a mama, you know, because you're a wife, because you're a father, because you're a lawyer, because you're a doctor. You're thinking this is just what I'm supposed to do. And you're not questioning it. And so what happens is poverty comes like a thief. Because you, you just, you just in la la land, you just hypnotized by routine and you're not aware of what's going on around you. And then all of a sudden, boom, you get an quote unquote unexpected bill. 
and then it's like it just puts you further behind further behind or it keeps you stuck in the sadness situation of never having enough or as soon as you get something it's it's something comes to take it like a like a like a thief as soon as you get something that thief comes and takes it because that thief has been observing you the thief is lurking in the shadows watching you seeing that you're distracted seeing that you know you just go with the flow you just in la la land not paying attention to life not paying attention to your life you know not thinking critically not not going to to engage in new experiences you just stay in the neighborhood you don't go any further than a five mile radius of your neighborhood and that thief of that poverty that thief called poverty just comes like out of the blue and it snatches and it takes the little that you have But when you are aware, when you start living your life intentionally, when you start monitoring your thoughts and not letting them just take control over your mind, but you take control over those thoughts, then poverty can't come in. You'll, you'll start to pay attention to the things and the environment around you and the people around you. And you'll start, you'll start becoming more aware of your surroundings. And you'll start seeing signs of how poverty is trying to come in. And you'll start protecting yourself. All right. Here are the 10 attributes of poverty. As I was developing this PowerPoint, what came to me are symptoms. The 10 symptoms of poverty. If you have any of these symptoms, then Somewhere in your life, there is poverty. You are experiencing a level of poverty consciousness. All right, so symptom number number one or attribute number one. Poverty is the spirit of rebellion to the authority of God, his prophets, etc. Remember, like I told you in the first lecture, uh, where I'm receiving this information from, this person is from the Christian religion. Okay, so he is giving examples from a Christian perspective. And it's okay. It's okay. There are going to be so many different types of people that are taking this course. Um, and one of them may, some of them may be Christian. It's okay. So this is, you can relate to this. If you're not Christian, let me give you another example. It's just the spirit. And when you see the word spirit, don't get caught up on the religious connotation of the word spirit. Because it's, everything is just energy. Christians, what Christians don't realize, and I didn't realize it when I was in Christianity, was that energy and spirit is the same thing. You're talking about an energy. Because in, in reality, everything is just energy. That's all it is. And energy can't be destroyed. It can only be changed and transmuted. That's all it can do. So, you're technically not destroying the in the the spirit of poverty or the energy of poverty what you're doing is just changing it and transmuting it into something into something of a higher vibration of a higher energy because poverty is a very low energy think think about it think how you feel when you have when you're stressed about money think how you feel um, when you're not, when anything that's associated with poverty, that we associate with poverty on a physical level, think how you feel when you experience it. Even when we associate poverty with, with being dirty or not clean, think about how, how different you feel when you are actually clean. When you take a shower, when you bathe, when you're in a clean environment. It's just energy. And, and these, these courses, this learning series is to help you elevate that energy. Get out that low vibrational energy of 
poverty and raise it up to prosperity okay and if you don't believe me just look at people who you think have money they look different to you they have a different energy about them you can see someone who can be designer down and they still look broke and dingy because it's an energy and then you can see somebody who don't have on any designer labels probably got the entire outfit from the thrift store but they just look prosperous they look wealthy they look successful because it's an energy it, it is an energy that you that you're interacting with that you're observing that's what you that's what it is it's an energy in christianity they call it a spirit it's energy all right so the spirit of rebellion outside of the context of christianity is basically when you just do what you want to do and can't nobody tell you nothing you just buck against authority you just don't know how to submit to authority it's your way or no way nobody can tell you what to do you are you think it's it's always a bad it's your way is is the better way always got something to say instead of just doing what you're asked to do you just you just always bucking up and and authority a child your child could be an authority to you they god can use your child to say something to you and you just totally dismiss it because you feel like oh i'm older than you and you just a child stay in a child's place what do, what do you what do you know so be mindful of who God places in your life as an authority, quote unquote, figure. And how you respond. If you turn your nose up, poverty. That means you have a symptom of poverty. If you base, if you only receive, if you only receive messages from people based on what they look like and whether you think they're qualified quote unquote to give you advice that's poverty because that authority like i said could come in so many different ways in so many different packages and if you just like oh you a woman you can't tell me nothing oh you black you can't tell me nothing you know oh you white you can't tell me nothing oh you just a little kid you can't tell me nothing it's just always you can't tell me nothing you can't tell me nothing that is a symptom of poverty poverty is a spirit of rebellion to the authority of god his prophets etc etc it's whoever at the time god is using as an authoritative authoritative figure in your life as an authority figure in your life that's poverty all right poverty is the spirit of laziness you just don't do nothing <laughs> you don't pick up after yourself you don't wash your own clothes you you know you just lazy you don't you just don't do anything Number three, poverty is the spirit of disobedience to the word of God. Whether you receive that word through church, synagogue, mosque, reading the Bible, or whether you receive that word from an idea, from a gut feeling, from your intuition telling you to do something, and you don't do it. Every time you totally ignore your intuition your gut that's poverty that's disobedience to the word of god your intuition is god speaking through you and to you and when you don't listen to it that's disobedience to the word of god and that is a symptom of poverty Poverty is a spirit of pride and arrogance. You just know everything. Ain't nobody better than you. Can't nobody do it better than you. Um, 
you just i'm not i'm not saying i i apologize i can never be wrong um it's everybody else it's everybody else i'm never wrong you always point the finger never take accountability for your actions that's pride and arrogance thinking that you're never going to get caught thinking you can just do people any kind of way and you never get caught because somebody gonna always bail me out. Somebody gonna always have my back. Ain't nothing gonna happen to me. That is a sign of poverty. Number five, poverty is the spirit of disunity. a house divided against itself and we're talking about disunity more than just not being able to come together with people and and accomplish a goal poverty is when it when you see disunity the word disunity is you being disunified within yourself divisive within yourself you can't make up your mind you present your, to be one way to people, but you really are a completely different person. That's this unity. That you're working at a job that you hate, but you're doing it because you want to flash and front and show off for people on the, on the gram, on social media, on TikTok. But you know that this is, this is not what you really want to be doing. That's disunity. Wherever in your life there's division, you're not at peace. You're not in integrity. There's no integrity. That, That means that there's poverty in your life. As we're going through these attributes, we're halfway through. You should be noticing that a lot of this don't have nothing to do with money. So if you thought that the only way that a person is is poor is because they don't have money, these attributes, these symptoms are are should should be totally dismantling that preconceived notion. Because as we're going through these attributes, a person could be a multi-billionaire and have a poverty consciousness. All right, poverty is a spirit of witchcraft, manipulation, control, oppression, pulling people down, etc. I like how he defines witchcraft because that's exactly what witchcraft is. It's not no, woo, you're going into the, um, well, it, <laughs> it is, oh, well, I'm not going to get into the etymology of witchcraft, but um, witchcraft one of the forms of witchcraft is where you are manipulating people, controlling people in in the intent to oppress them, to keep them down, to keep them under your thumb. So here is a, a form of witchcraft. Anytime you attempt to keep somebody down, whether it's through your words, you good for nothing, you ain't gonna never be nothing, you just like your no good daddy, you just like your crazy mama, you know, your whole family crazy, you just stupid, you just dumb. That's a form of witchcraft. You're using your words verbally to keep somebody down, to keep someone under your control, so to keep somebody from doing better than you. Oh, you ugly, you fat, you know, your eyes, your eyes are too big, you know, you got buck teeth. That's, that's what's being referred to in this, in number six. You're using your words or you could be even your actions, anything where you're trying to control a person, manipulate a person, keep them down, keep them under your thumb under your thumb where they won't ever do better than you that is a spirit of poverty because what you're essentially saying or doing is you're attempting to keep this person subjugated oppressed under you 
So they won't outdo you because you subconsciously think they're going to take something from you, that there is not enough. So if they become better, quote unquote, in your mind, better than you, then somehow it's going to take from you. It's going to take the food off your out your mouth. It's going to take the food off your table. It's going to make your paycheck shorter. It's going to make your bank account smaller. No, your paycheck is shorter because you didn't get your lazy butt up and go to work. How about that? But that's what number six is saying. That is a form of poverty because you think it's not enough. That is that if people start doing better than you, it's somehow going to take from you. So you engage in this form of witchcraft. I'm going to manipulate you. I'm going to oppress you. I'm going to subjugate, subjugate you and keep you down. So you don't do better than me. Number seven, poverty is a spirit of dryness, lack and limitation. I've been saying this the whole, the entire class about lack and limitation. All right, the last three attributes or symptoms of poverty. Poverty is a spirit of envy, hatred, and bitterness. Come on, people, you need to elevate from that. If you envious of a person, you hate somebody, you bitter towards somebody, you're going to stay in poverty. You're going to stay in poverty. You should. It should be nobody on the face of this earth that gets that much energy from you anyway. I don't have time to be envious of nobody. I don't have time to be hating nobody. That is, I mean, those energies, those emotions are so heavy. And science has already proven. Um, psychologists have already proven, psychiatrists have already proven that those emotions cause disease in your body. They cause heart attacks. They cause strokes. Strokes, they cause high blood, high blood pressure, they cause um, acne, they cause um, organ failure, they cause hypertension, they cause arthritis. Do the research, people. Poverty. That's a poverty mindset. When you're envious of people and, you're hatred and you hate people and you have bitterness toward people. All that is, going back to what I said, all that is is that you believe it's not enough. You believe it's not enough. Why did that person get it? They didn't deserve it. You know, they don't did X, Y, and Z. That's all that projection. You don't know the price they paid and what they did to get where they are. Basically, when you're saying, oh, why did they get that? And they don't do X, Y, and Z. It's basically you did X, Y, and Z. And you've told yourself that you don't deserve it. The very thing you're accusing them of. And let's say, for instance, they even did what you said they did. But you're projecting. You're saying because you did it, you don't deserve it. That's what you're saying when you say, well, they don't do X, Y, and Z. So they shouldn't get nothing. That's because you've done X, Y, and Z, and you believe that you shouldn't get anything. That's how you're punishing yourself. But you're projecting that on someone else. That is a sim symptom or attribute of poverty. Number nine, poverty is a spirit of leisure and pleasure. It is nothing wrong with pleasure and leisure. It's nothing wrong with vacations and doing absolutely nothing and enjoying the beauty and the lavishness of the ocean and of the blue sky and of wonderful food and mimosas and you know and and lobster and whatever it is that you like but doing it all the time ex excess is a spirit of poverty because what happens is you're so inundated in pleasure 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 it becomes addictive and you just feed in the flesh, feed in the flesh. That number nine reminds me of the devil card in tarot. 
because that is the def that is the uh one of the meanings of the devil card in tarot of doing something in excess and um you become obsessive you become addicted to your carnal fleshly desires you just want to party all the time you want to have sex all the time you just want to do everything that feels good you want to drink and smoke and do drugs and anything that makes the flesh feel good you want to do it all the time there's no moderation there's no balance there's no temperance and so what happens when you do that, you open the door to poverty because then guess what? You're spending all your money. You're not being a good steward of your money and you're spending all your money on just what makes the flesh feel good. And then you wake up and you're broke in more ways than one. So that is how leisure and pleasure can 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 be a poverty mentality a poverty consciousness because you're just you're just throwing money away um actually you're actually planting money what you're doing is you're planting the seeds so wherever so if you are all about fulfilling and satisfying the desires of the flesh so you're planting the seed into the sex into the drugs, into the alcohol, into the food, into the clothes, into the cars. And then you're gonna reap that. You're gonna reap that. You're gonna want you just like, I gotta have more. I gotta have more. I gotta have more. Because money is just a seed. It's just energy. You're just exchanging energy. So if I give my money to those type of things that satisfy the flesh, I'm exchanging energy. And so what I'm telling myself subconsciously is I want more of that energy. And then you look up and you find yourself not able to, to, to pay for it anymore. And so now you're in poverty. Number 10, poverty is the spirit of selfishness, greed, and covetedness. Just, you just It ain't enough. And I want what they have. 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 Well, I can do that. I can do that. Or you don't give. You just take, 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 take. You don't give anything. You don't give of your time. You don't give of your money. You don't give of your resources. You don't give of your ideas. You don't give of, of your talents, your gifts. Not saying that, remember, because giving and receiving is a spiritual law so you shouldn't just give 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 either because you're you're out of balance but you just take 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 and don't give anything nothing poverty because if you give nothing you get nothing poverty all right the references here are the references where I received my information in order to develop and teach this class. You can go. Oh, well, it went off. But those were the references. I clicked too fast. Those were the references. Um, Kimberly Jones, buy the book Wealthy Blacks before the Emancipation Proclamation. Uh, that's where I received the information to give you the cultural influencer for today. And where I received or where I gathered the information about um, the 10 attributes of poverty, I received that from online. It was an article by Dr. Olusala A. Coker, and the title of the article was Complete, De Complete Deliverance from the Spirit of Poverty and Lack. Let me repeat that. Where I received the information about the 10 attributes of poverty, it came from an article online. The title of the article is Complete Deliverance from the Spirit of Poverty and Lack. 
by Dr. Olusala A. Coker. Dr. Olusala, the first name is O-L-U-S-O-L-A, and the last name is Coker, C-O-K-E-R. So if you're interested, because I went too fast, and you want to go and find the article online and read it for yourself, you may do so. Here are your resources. If you would like to take any of my classes on Udemy, I'm under Reverend Deandra Everhart. Currently, there are three courses um, available on Udemy under Reverend Deandra Everhart that you can take. Um, I'm also on YouTube under Mirrored Moments with Tia Deshay. I'm on Amazon. I have six books that I am an author of. And if you go to Amazon and type in the search box, Tia Deshay, you'll find my books. And if you would like to donate, give an offering, tithe, however you like to label it, you can do so through my PayPal at TiaDeshay at Yahoo.com. Here are my source codes. My source, co co <laughs> my source codes will take you to my website and will take you to other resources that I have that are available to you. So you can just uh, use your phone or if you're on your phone taking this course, you know, um, ask someone to use their phone or or you can get come online, get on a computer and scan the source codes to see the other resources that I offer um, and other ways that you can connect with me. So once again, it is with immense gratitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Immense gratitude that you took time out of your life, that you spent the currency of time with me in this second class, uh, the second lecture of the series, Rags to Riches, Eliminating a Poverty Consciousness. I don't take it lightly what I do. I don't take it lightly what I say and the messages that I receive to, to deliver to you, whether it's, from, it's, whether it's in the form of a channel message, a prophetic word, or a class, lecture, online learning, however I am used to speak the mind and thoughts of God, I don't take it lightly. Because it is time, people. It is time now, 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 this very moment, this very moment, this very moment that we need to elevate collectively our minds from poverty to prosperity. We are doing ourselves and the, and the generations that come after us a severe disservice when we stay in a poverty mindset. The earth, Mother Earth, is begging us to elevate our mindset from poverty to prosperity. Regardless of what they tell you on television about climate change, scientifically, much of what they say is true. Scientifically, yes. But metaphysically, the reason why we are experiencing climate change is because we're not elevating our consciousness. We are still walking around with this heavy energy of anger, bitterness, regret, guilt, and that's all connected to poverty. When we elevate our mindset from poverty to prosperity, then we help heal the earth and we help balance climate change. We help balance the climate of this planet. Climate change is more than just scientific, scientific uh, means or scientific answers or solutions. Climate change is also connected to metaphysics. And who would think that if we, when we elevate our minds from a poverty consciousness to a prosperity consciousness, we are contributing to healing the earth and we are helping, helping with climate change. We are helping Mother Earth balance itself or herself back out. That's how important this is to Mother Earth and to, to us as a whole. That's how important it is to elevate your mind from a poverty consciousness to a prosperity consciousness. 
If you don't do it for anything else or anybody else, you do it for Mother Earth. Help heal the planet. Thank you, 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 thank you. Do your homework. Do the work. Do the work and you'll see the change. Our next class, we are going to talk about the signs of a poverty attack. Until next time, stay blessed, be blessed, stay aware, be aware.